chairman, members of the board, uh, over a year ago now. Actually, uh, we're in the second year, last year. All of the uh, check register information for the district was placed on the website. Uh, this year, we place the months that have closed so far on the website. Uh, this was required by uh, some legislation that was passed by the state requiring public bodies to place on their district website or on the, on the state website the check registers for the district. Uh, it's, it's interesting, this was on the uh, website for about a year. And I heard almost nothing from it. And uh, within the last two to three months, uh, it has become very much an issue. It's become an issue that has been played out in at least two uh, local newspapers through letters to the editor that have in them all statements. So uh, I want to go through and talk about it just a little bit. I want to talk about those two letters. And uh, I want to take issue with the fact that letters of this type that are written to newspapers without any attempt to uh, verify the information and also to make accusations that are improper and not correct produces nothing but faults and misunderstanding. As we go through this, I want to show our public how to look at this information and hopefully help them to better understand it. What you see before you right now is the District 5, a, a copy of the District 5 webpage. If you were to go to www.lexington5.org. This is the page that would come up. And when you get there, if you go to departments and then you click on finance, you will come to this page, which is the financial services page on the website. On that website, down under the list of items to, which you may choose to look at, is the School District 5 Expenditure Transparency page. When you click on that page, it brings you to an explanation of the different kinds of accounts that show up in the account expenditures. This is, I, I would tell you, this information was not on our website until about a week or so ago, and we added it to try to give some additional clarification to hopefully help with understanding of the uh, transparency information. The uh, law that was passed regarding transparency information requires us to publish our check register. It doesn't say that we may go in and manipulate that check register or we might do other things to it. It says we should publish our check register. So that's what we do. But when you look at that check register, what you find is that in the check register will be a series of different accounts associated with the various expenditures. And what I want to point out here this afternoon is this. When you look at an account number, and that account number begins with the number one, you know that that expenditure came out of our general fund and represents both state and local tax dollars. So if you see an expenditure and the account number, first digit in that account is a one, then you know that that, might, uh, that is your local tax dollars and state tax dollars at work. If you see in the account number the first digit of two, the first digit three, the first digit eight, or the first digit nine, then that tells you that those are special revenue accounts and not general fund accounts. What that means is that no local tax dollars are being used for that expenditure. It might be 
Education Improvement Act funds, it might be state tax dollars, it might be federal tax dollars, or it might be no tax dollars. Because those account groups represent both federal, state, and non-tax dollars through grants, etc. In other words, the grant might be a federal grant, or it might be a private grant. It might not be any tax dollars. But what we do know is that the expenditures that occur in those accounts will be spent according to the grant doctrine. In other words, we don't have any latitude. We spend it according to the way the grant was written. If the grant uh, calls for expenditures of a certain kind, then we have to spend that money that way. And that's a part of our single audit act, which is a part of the audit process that we go through at the end of the year that our auditors look at and, to, and they ensure as a part of the audit process that we in fact did adhere to all of those rules and regulations. And Ms. Murphy, that's a part of the reason it takes as long as it does to do the audit because they have to go through it in detail, all of our expenditures. So we know then that the two, three, eight, and nine beginning numbers represent expenditures that don't involve any local tax dollars at all. It might involve some state tax dollars, it might involve some federal tax dollars, or they might involve simply private grant dollars. The next category of expenditures would be those accounts that start with a five. That represents capital expenditures and would be associated with things such as our bond referendum or other capital expenditures through maintenance and those kinds of things that constitute a, a capital expenditure. And that uh, very well could be uh, or is uh, tax dollars there when you see a point, when you see an, an account in five. If you see an account beginning with the first number six, that represents a, an enterprise fund. And we have two enterprise funds. What is an enterprise fund? An enterprise fund is a fund that operates like a business. It accounts for, uh, it, it, uh, it is funded and operated on the money it generates. No tax dollars are involved. The two enterprise funds that we have in this district would be the Food Service Fund. The Food Service Fund does get some USDA commodities in the form of food and food uh, products that, that are shipped here as a part of the USDA commodity program. So it does get that, but we don't get any federal dollars or we don't, uh, other than that uh, allocated to food or that comes in the form of food. And then, of course, we charge students for their lunch price, and they pay it each week to, to eat lunch, and it operates as an enterprise fund, stands on its own, and uh, we uh, spend no local tax dollars for that program. We spend only the money generated through the enterprise fund. The other enterprise fund is an represents the after-school programs that we operate in the district. Most of our elementary schools run an after-school program that's a program designed for those parents who want to participate to allow their child to stay, or children to stay, after school and to participate in activities that the school may design or have their children participate in. And they pay for that, that the opportunity to have their children participate in that program. No tax dollars are involved in the program. In fact, we charge the program for the utility and the space they use, custodial costs and utility costs, to make sure that we don't spend any taxpayers' money in, in terms of utilities or custodial costs for those programs. So that's an enterprise fund, and it operates on its own dollars as well. And then there's one other area, and this area has to do with activity funds, and you see it at the 
bottom right here. And uh, these would be uh, funds that, that uh, we have a fiduciary responsibility for. That is, we account for their dollars, but the dollars belong to the program. Uh, examples of this would be clubs and organizations that uh, raise money to do certain activities. And when they raise those monies, they may spend them for which they raise the funds. And uh, we simply account for it, and that's the uh, 700 group. So you, you can't see it at the top of the page, but it shows up right here. And uh, you'll see it, you'll see that many of those uh, producery type uh, expenditures when you go go through the ledger. So I point that out to help you understand the nature of the expenditures and to determine whether tax dollars are involved or whether tax dollars are not involved. On this page, you have the months in blue, which represents uh, months in which uh, activity has been posted, and the ones in black are yet to be posted. We are actually posting right now through September because October has not closed yet. This is the accounts payable or check register side of it, and uh, then there's the purchasing card side of it. And I'll talk about that in just a moment. But when we go to Let's take September, the most recent, recent month that was published, and we go there and we click on September. When we click on September, we get a document that looks like this. This is actually our check register as it comes off of our system and we simply post it. Now, let's look at what we were talking about. If you look at this first expenditure, the Hartford Life Insurance Company, you see the one, one means that that's a general fund account, i.e. tax dollars, both local and uh, state. This particular account spent $10,284, I think it is, I might need my glasses over, I got that right. And it went to optional retirement at What that is, that represents the uh, deductions that we withheld from employees who elect to participate in the optional retirement program through Aetna. And that's simply those dollars withheld from their uh, monthly pay and then it's written as a check to the Aetna insurance company, the Hartford insurance